Hi guys, Jessica here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys all of my camera equipment. So lenses, film cameras, camera accessories, anything that I would take with me on a photo shoot or that I have used in my photography, I'm gonna be talking about today. So let's get started. There's a lot, there's a lot to go through. <laughs> so let's go. Now, before we begin, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. I get asked a lot about what camera I use and what lens I use. So let, that's a good place to start. <laughs> okay, so this is my go-to setup. We have the Canon 5D Mark IV and then we have the 24-70 to 2.8 lens, both Canon. Uh, this is an L series lens. It's my favorite lens. A lot of the shoots that you guys see on my Instagram or on my portfolio on jessicacobasi.com, a lot of those pictures were taken with the 24-70 lens. This lens is very versatile and I just like the fact that I can get a close portrait or I can get something a little bit wider, show some of the scenery. So it just gives me a little bit more options. And then the 5D Mark IV, I get asked so much, are you gonna switch to mirrorless soon? Are you gonna ditch your dinosaur camera? Jessica's holding a camera from like the 1900s at this point, cause that's what people see this as now. I don't know why you guys are roasting this. <laughs> I personally like it, I don't see, I, I like my 5D Mark IV. Personally, I can't see myself upgrading anytime soon. Like I, I'm not constantly like thinking about it when I sleep, like, oh, should I upgrade? You know, I just don't, I have other things to dream about. I have like a list of stuff and it, it's long, you know, and the nightmares get in the way sometimes. So I'm just trying to make room and the mirrorless thing, it's not on the list yet. So it hasn't made it there. You know, we're thinking about it. <laughs> the quality of mirrorless is really great, but uh, you know, I really like the, the setup that I have right now, I'm very comfortable with it, but I am open to upgrading eventually. But I don't know, don't quote me. I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen. We'll see. We'll just mark me down for maybe, <laughs> I don't know. So one thing though, the 24 to 70 lens is a very expensive lens. Just like literally almost every, <laughs> every lens out there is very expensive, especially an L series lens. So I really wanted this lens. I ended up going on eBay and finding it for like $500 cheaper. It was used, it had a little bit of wear and tear, so it wasn't completely brand new. But you know, honestly, you can get some really good lenses for way cheaper if you just buy them used and make sure that they're in good condition and make sure you're buying from a reputable seller. Like don't go buy from like the first person you see that lists this lens for like, $20, you know, like, oh, use it one time, you know, $50. Like, if it's too good to be true, Kevin, it probably is. Okay, let's don't go there. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. The 35 1.4. This has been through so much with me. You know, I've used this for some of my most important photo shoots. Um, I shoot almost all of my weddings, my, my wedding couple sessions with this lens. It's such an important lens to me. Like, we have so much history together. <laughs> it's a 1.4, uh, thir again, 35 millimeter. Honestly, I will not do a wedding without this lens. It's wide enough where I can get a nice portrait, but then step back and get some more scenic shots with my clients. I don't use this a lot for model shoots though. It's kind of strictly for wedding clients, like bride and groom pictures. Sometimes I'll get some nice, uh, like decor pictures with it, like at the venue. You know, since I can shoot wide open, it makes it look kind of dreamy and nice. And so this is such a great lens to have. I definitely 100% recommend it if you're shooting weddings. Uh, beautiful, beautiful lens. So the next lenses we have are the 50 millimeters. We have 51.2, 51.4. Now let me tell you about these because if you're probably watching this and thinking, hey, which one should I choose, 1.2, 1.4? It's a very common question. Should you splurge, pay the extra money, just get the 1.2, or should you just do the, the 1.4? I wanna be 100% honest with you guys. I will probably just end up using this lens most of the time because it's lighter. I still get some amazing quality with it. Honestly, if I even put two pictures, one with the 1.4, one with 1.2, you probably couldn't even tell the difference. I mean, I don't know. I really feel that way when I'm shooting. I don't feel like, oh yeah, this is 1.2 quality. Yeah, extra thousand dollars. I can see the thousand dollars in this picture. No, that's never how I feel. So if you have the extra money, get the 1.2 if you really want to. Get the L series lens. But if you are on a budget, and yeah, I was on a budget when I first started photography. Um, so I couldn't afford a lot of L series lenses. I started out with the 1.4. This is such a beautiful lens, worth every single penny. I've used it so much. This was my original favorite lens. 
So yeah, this is such a nice lens and don't feel like you're missing out because you don't have the 1.2 lens. So I use these lenses a lot and I definitely recommend them and I love them both. So the Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 lens, this is my first Sigma lens. I've heard a lot of good things about Sigma, the quality, the sharpness. So I was really excited to use this. Uh, I used it for literally one photo shoot that I did last year for an engagement session and we, we got some really nice pictures with it. Great quality, it focused really nicely. So definitely the quality was there. I think it, because it was my first time using a prime so wide like this, I, it was, it was like a, a little bit of a learning curve because it was so, so wide. I would recommend it to wedding photographers who want a little bit more scenic shots. I see a lot of photographers, especially for weddings, putting the bride and the groom at the very bottom of the, you know, the composition and then having a lot of the scenery fill the rest of the frame. So I was kind of thinking along those lines. Um, definitely excited to use this for my future weddings. One other lens that I don't use too often, but I bring with me to every single wedding is the Macro 50. And this is a 2.8 lens. I do a lot of ring shots with this. Th this is like for super, super close up detail shots. I was shooting a wedding and one of the videographers was using this exact lens to get a detail shot of the ring. And I was watching him record it and I'm like, wow, that's some really nice quality. What lens is this? So he recommended it to me. It's the 50 macro lens. I believe I bought it online used for about 150 or $200. I I'm gonna take this with me to every wedding that I shoot so I can get detail shots of the rings, the cards, flowers, cakes, all that stuff. I use this lens. Very, very helpful to have a macro lens as a wedding photographer. So I would recommend this one as well. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Okay, oh my, is there dust on this? Oh my, this is embarrassing. Okay, okay, I use this, you guys. I use it once a year. The next lens, do I regret buying it? Yeah, I kind of do because I don't really use it a lot, but maybe in the future, when we're allowed back outside, I will, I'm gonna be able to use this and I will, I'll get my money's worth. So this is the 85 1.4 lens. Now, this is, uh, a newer version that Canon came out with. They have the 1.2, which is, um, I was debating between the two. Should I get the 1.4 or should I get the 1.2? I think I spent a week researching and kind of debating like 1.4, 1.2. I ended up getting the 1.4, so let me tell you why. Uh, a couple things, this was cheaper. <laughs> um, this weighed less than the 1.2. So, you know, for me, I hate huge, bulky lenses. I want to feel like I'm being weighed down. I weigh like a hundred pounds. So it's like, if you weigh more than me, I don't want to ha carry you with me. You know, I don't want to carry your weight. I'm carrying, you know, I'm carrying my own. Yeah. If I can avoid carrying a super heavy lens, I will, <laughs> I'll do it. This weighs a little less than the 1.2. It has better image stabilization. It focuses faster. So that is why I chose it over the 1.2. Such nice creamy bokeh and yeah, definitely a recommendation if you're a portrait photographer and you can get some nice full body. You know, do full body too, who cares? Just do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be portraits. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Being a photographer, it's so important for me to have my work and brand displayed professionally online and Squarespace really makes it easy to do that. They have features that make it simple to use for anyone looking to claim a domain build a website, or market their brand. They also have beautiful templates for a wide range of projects, plus 24-7 award-winning customer support if you ever need it. You can also create an online store to sell products like presets, or you can even sell a service. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com jessica to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. With that being said, let's get back into the video. So this is a 24 to 105 lens. Honestly, I haven't really used it that much or at all. When you have a favorite lens, you tend to use that a lot more for every situation rather than, oh yeah, let me use like a totally different lens in this situation. You usually just do whatever is most comfortable. That's kind of what I got used to. But I, I do want to try more shots with this lens because it is, you know, a, it's 105. I can get really close with this. Um, have I tried it? A lot no am I interested in it yeah like we're I want to have a relationship with this but I have like all these uh, you know I got a lot going on 
Another reason why I haven't used this too much is because it is F4, so I don't know. Maybe if I'm like in a studio, I'll bring this out, but for natural light, I need, I need a couple more stops. I don't know, so maybe I'll use this in the future with like 15 studio lights, but I'm just being dramatic, but yeah, this is still a good lens, but I don't really use it that much. So this one, kind of awkward because it's still in the box. Uh, it's kind of large. It's a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. It's f4 to 5.6. It's an L series lens. I haven't had a chance to use this. Uh, you know, I just, things get a little hectic and I don't think, yeah, let me bring my 70 to 300. I, you know, I have so many other lenses that I may want to use and that I've used before, but I definitely want to make a video on this and try it out. Um, it's on my list of things to do. <laughs> So um, now that we've got the lenses out of the way, let me tell you guys uh, my little accessories here and there. So I use the Profoto A1 flash for almost all of my weddings. This comes with me everywhere. I absolutely love it. It's so easy to use. The battery life is amazing. I mean, I don't get nervous taking this on a wedding and then thinking the battery is gonna die like 10 minutes later. So it charges pretty fast. Again, the, the one thing is that it's easy to use because I've used so many flashes that were it, it was like taking like a law school bar exam i don't know it was just like 15 buttons everywhere so this comes with me to a lot of my weddings and i carry stuff like a little card holder here this is a cf card re card holder and so i just keep my cards in here just toss it in my bag and it keeps my cards nice and safe and organized and so that comes with me so if you're wondering the brand for the first card holder. The second card holder I actually bought off of Amazon. It's called B-Way. This one's for my SD cards as well and they have the same one but for CF cards. And it's a little bit more rugged, it's more protected and it's just very sturdy. So if you're looking for card holders, would definitely recommend this one. Again, the brand is B-Way. So I recently got into film photography. I bought this at a thrift shop in Paris with my friend. She was like, you should try this camera it's like five euros and I'm like oh does it even still work so we bought it we took it to a camera shop in Paris he like checked it for me he's like yeah it still works you just need batteries and everything looks to be in order so I actually took pictures while I was in Paris using this camera I'll show you guys some of those uh, this is the AF 35m it's a Canon point-and-shoot film camera it's 38 millimeter and I've loved using this. It's so much fun. I don't have a lot of time to use it because it does require a little bit more work. You gotta get the film, load it in properly, you know, make sure that the, oh, I still have film in this, wow. <laughs> gotta make sure that the ASA is, I, don't, I just keep it at 400 to be honest with you. I'm guessing that's ISO. You know, it has a flash option, which is really cool. And yeah, so I'm still, Oh my, okay, as you can see, we're, okay, I'm I'm a professional. <laughs> we're good, you guys, we're good. You guys can sponsor me. Okay, that's, okay, what's going on here? Why won't it close? Maybe I put this in wrong? Let's not do that anymore. <laughs> okay, we'll put some tape on there, we're good. So got into a little bit of a film photography. You can say that I'm cultured, you know, I'm a hipster, whatever you wanna say. You know, I have, I got right here, this is it. I like the process of film and I'm really enjoying getting the pictures developed and then seeing them days later, not even remembering what I took and just seeing, it's like a surprise every time. Who doesn't like surprises, right? I can think of a couple of things that I wouldn't like to be surprised with, yeah. So that's all that's in my camera bag, even though that was a lot. That was a lot of stuff. Just know I earned everything, I paid for everything with the exception of like one or two lenses that Canon might have sent me. Everything else you see, blood, sweat and tears. A lot more tears than blood in the sweat thing. You know what I mean? Just crying constantly, you know, in the corner being sick. You know what I mean? Just that kind of thing. Yeah. So anyways, that's my kit. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions about the equipment that I use, the gear that I use. Leave them down below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. I would love to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.